Hey everybody, welcome back to Thumb FPV. Now today I am going to kick off the first video for my mini build series on the Armaton Marmot. We have this drone here, fully assembled, ready to go, ready to fly, but I am going to go through a DIY build video for this with you, with my fiance here. Uh, she's going to ask some questions about this, things that I probably would not even think to bring up because uh, she knows a little bit, but acronyms and what everything does and why she's not too familiar with. So she's going to help us out in this video and try to explain some of the things that I may miss to the newer, to the hobby audience. So we're going to get into this real quick. Let's build this drone. <laughs> first get your package it's gonna look like this I have already opened mine just to go over it and make sure that everything is there my name is on the front of this this is thumb FPV my name is Matthew Tatro this is the official sealed well now unsealed Armatin package right here this comes from Taiwan and this is everything that you are going to get with this DIY kit like I said, I have already taken everything apart to make sure that things are here. I have also done a little pre-printing of some 3D products that I found would be useful for this, but we're gonna skip that nonsense for right now and just worry about the actual frame. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all that out. said I did put some 3d printed parts in here they do not come with it so do not expect them if you get this so we have pretty much everything set up here first we have our ESC's four of those we have our top plate here our bottom plate is included with our arms. This is a file that will come with it in case you should have to sand down an edge for the frame to fit together right. Our RSXR receiver. This is our VTX antenna. Foam pad for the battery. Set of props. Our Armaton battery strap, which I might add is of very good quality. I highly recommend getting those. We have some hardware here. This is our PTX TBS Black Sheep right here. Um, this is going to be our flight controller. A little bit more hardware. They did even throw in some solder which is nice. Uh, there's some candy, there's some heat shrink and zip ties and then your XT60 plug and other stuff inside that little capsule right there for finishing up. There are the titanium brackets here for the back for holding the top plate in place. These are our camera mount sides here. This is part of the camera mounting system as well. And these two things that I just brought up here are more hardware for the back of the drone. Now, this is some specs on the motor. These are, like I said, this is the 4S. So these are 2150 kilovolt. Configuration is 12N41 or 14P. It's got a T4, TC4 shaft. Uh, stator is Kawasaki 0.15. Bearing is NSK684 or 4 by 9 by 4. The magnet is an N52SH. They are curved. The weight of them excluding the cable so this is just the bare motor itself is 31.6 grams idle current of the motor is 1.2 amps number of cells that is capable of handling is two through six and the cable length on this of 28 wg is 150 millimeters so that's the specs for the motors Have a little sticker right here 
is the diagram for putting the frame together. We're gonna jump into that and that'll wrap up this video. My fiance has some questions that she would like to ask. Uh, maybe you are thinking the same thing. I don't know, but I'm gonna do the best that I can to answer her questions and hopefully yours at the same time. So going over the initial parts that were included in this box, is there anything that you didn't understand or found confusing? Um, what are the foam pads for? Foam pads? Yes. Okay, that's a good question. Um, half of that, the ones on the top, are to hold in the battery pad. When you use the battery strap, it pulls it down into the foam, creates a gentle form of non-abrasive friction, and stops the battery from flying out while you're in the air. That way you don't lose your drone, so on and so forth. Um, the ones on the bottom, I'm not gonna lie, I don't know what the hell these are for. To save your drone from getting scraped up on the cement, I guess. But I don't know anybody that lands flat. So, foam pad, battery holder of sorts, um, and then, yeah, some bumpers. Mm -hmm. It's very, uh, very interesting. I prefer the rubber ones myself but I have never used a foam one yet, so we're gonna see how this works out. Okay, and then what does VTX mean? VTX, good question. VTX is Video Transmitter X. Um, in this hobby, you will find there are a lot of X's here and there. Um, TX, VTX, uh, there's several others. Uh, video transmitter and then just the variable of whatever it is that way it's not being precise to one it's more of like a open word referring to all of them even though you're talking about one mm -hmm. yeah. so, VTX is your video transmitter and I kind of have an idea what it is on ESC but I'm sure somebody's new that might not know what it means ESC simply stands for electronic speed controller ESC is um, here, to the side of the frame. Um, what that does, you have your whatever S battery. For this one's going to be a 4S. So overall, full, fully charged battery of your 16.8 volts or whatever. Um, and you have your main wires, your ground, your power, and then your three wires here. Um, so your voltage, you always run constant current. Your power stays the same. Your ESCs are what can control the amps, if you will. So if you want your motor to spin faster, the amperage will go up. If you want that to go lower, your amperage will go down. That's the variable that helps the motors decide how they're supposed to act when they interface with the flight control based on the commands that you need. Yes, there's a lot of techy stuff to this. I did not realize how in-depth these things were when I first got into them, but in the last two years, I have learned a lot. Yes. Yes. And then RSXR receiver. RSXR receiver. There are several different annotations, acronyms. I am not exactly sure what the RSXR means. I know that in comparison to its most other commonly used receiver by FreeSky. The main difference between the XM and the RSXR is the RSXR does support uh, telemetry. Um, it also supports up to 16 channels, whereas the XM Plus only supports eight. Uh, telemetry mainly being that there is a data pad that works A diversity mode which means that it has two different ways to send and receive the data and telemetry will interact with your TX prism that's your transmitter your radio controller um, and actually communicate with it you can set battery warnings or limits you can have a range warning there's a lot of things that you can do with it but that's what that is and that's why yeah. <laughs> and then when you get like the DIY kit for 
for the drone, and then there's the frame. How do you differentiate the front and the back? That's a very good question. That is a very good question. Uh, sometimes it is hard to figure that out. Uh, a lot of drone frames do not come with instructions. Uh, they assume that anybody purchasing the frame has done this a hundred times and you sometimes literally just have to win. Uh, this one fortunately enough where the cutout pieces are here, also as it showed in the instructions, uh, will be in the front of the frame, which is where your camera goes. 99% of the time your receiver and VTX antennas are going to go out the back. Yeah. Sometimes you get a frame and you'll spend a lot of time just looking at it to see what is what and you might actually end up taking it apart a couple of times before you figure out the right way that it goes. Mm -hmm. It's kind of annoying. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you can lay like the parts and pieces kind of like on top of it to kind of get an idea before putting it all together and ripping it apart to put it back together. <laughs> What's a TC4 shaft? TC4 shaft. Uh, most Stator motors come with a TC2. These ones come with TC4. It is the grade of the titanium that they use for the shafts. High quality, it will stop from bending or breaking if you get into a crash. And what's this part? This parts. This is your RSXR receiver. These are the antennas that came out. Uh, something I like to utilize is all my extra scrap. So this is simply a piece of heat shrink that I used a spare cutoff tail from a cable tie. Mm -hmm. and put the antennas through it and then I heat shrinked it together and just formed it so it would go up. Ideally you want any of your antennas, once this is built, to be either up or down. A lot of them just stick straight out the back and that's fine, but if you turn around you're coming back and the battery's in front of the VTX antenna, you can lose your signal really quick. Um, I like to typically run my um, receiver antennas down here and out the front, but in mm -hmm. this video I put the receiver to the inside here. Um, it's easily accessible and if I move the battery strap over, uh, I can get right to the bind button if I need to use it. So. And is that that's the VTX? Is that what it is? That's the VTX antenna. Okay. I don't think I have any more questions. Well, we're gonna go over this and talk about it some more, even though this is already built. But we're gonna go over it in the process of building it and talk about more things. So for right now, this is the unboxing and basic overall review of the parts that are in it with some newbie questions for you guys. Uh, we're going to have a few more videos on this drone build coming up, so please stay tuned and watch those. Uh, I'm sure you'll find those interesting. This is Thumb FPV. Thanks for watching.